What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Pixel Plus UI on this device. And here as you can see this is the latest build as of right now. This is the 9th February 2021 build of the Pixel Plus UI. And here the build version is 3.1 and it says Palladium over here. This is a build by sort of of course and this is an official build based on Android 11. The build status still shows stable and you can see the change logs over here. And the first line over here is what makes the difference. And in my opinion, this is the only ROM I think coming with Android 11 and the ANX camera by default over here. So that's the most interesting feature in my opinion of this ROM. So let me show you the home screen. This is how it looks like. And if you want to flash this ROM, click on the card right over there. And also I have added the icon over here, of course. But yes, you do get the ANX camera by default. That's the best feature in my personal opinion for the like Pixel Plus UI for the Redmi Note 7 Pro. And here, let me show you, this is not actually the version 185R. If you go into the apps info, let me show you in the advanced. As you can see, it says version 185 over here. So this is actually the ANX camera version 185, which was there for the Android 10. But yes, it comes with uh, some problems in my opinion because the portrait mode is still broken as you are noticing if I switch to portrait mode it will show camera error but that's totally fine for me at least because at least we are getting the ANX camera or the MIUI camera working even with the video mode and stuff as you are noticing I can shoot 4k 60fps videos then there is the pro mode and stuff then also in the photo mode as you can see super fine in the front camera too as you are noticing the front camera is working flawlessly no issues whatsoever so the best thing in my personal opinion about this pixel plus os or i mean the pixel plus ui is the anx camera that we are getting by default now let me show you the android version section and here we have the pixel plus ui new logo on top and i'm saying new because as you can see it has a little bit of like 3d kind of design so i am liking it the maintainer's name is of course sort of and the pixel plus ui version as you are noticing is 3.1 palladium official build for violet of course or the redmi note 7 pro and if you're looking at the android version this is of course based on android 11 as you are noticing let me go back the security patch is latest of february 5th 2021 the stock kernel is this azure alfred intro plus kernel and the build time over here says 9th february of course and there is the build number and right now let me show you the settings panel this is how it looks like but let me tell you some things yes it does not have a lot of customizations at the moment but i think there will be customizations in the future updates but here as of right now this is still an early build now in the system panel this is how it looks like and all over the ui you get these kind of animations but yes there is still no system updater over here in the gesture settings this is how it looks like we have this power menu kind of thing where you get the device controls and stuff and let me show you it. the smart home controls of google home over here also there is the power of and restart let me go back we have the system navigation gestures and here we have the settings for that and you can control the gesture bar length and that's why my gesture bar is quite long as you are noticing and you can also enable the haptic feedback of course and two button and three button navigation is also there and there is the quickly open camera so you can just double tap the power button and it will launch the camera if you have set it to always as you can see right now i have chosen the anx camera so right now if i double press the power button it directly opens the camera so that's a great thing quickly open camera is working flawlessly and there is also this quick torch feature if you enable it if you long press the power button it will toggle the torch when the device is locked now again you won't find any kind of customizations panel separately over here but there is the violet parts and over here there are some things let me show you there is the display kcl so this is great that you're getting the full control of your display kind of customization and there is the slinux mode and stuff and there is the persist across reboot fps info overlay is there so if you enable it right now as you are noticing on the top left it is showing the fps so while gaming and stuff you can see the fps in real time there is a clear speaker option so this is a great feature that it actually works i guess and it clears the speakers by making some kind of high frequency sound or something and here we have the me sound enhancer as you can see so the me audio rack is actually present but it is in this kind of like violet part section it is not in the sound section and the me audio rack should be working fine here and there is also the plethora of preset choosing option so that is great let me show you the home screen this is how it looks like of course we get the pixel launcher by default and widgets and stuff everything is working super fine on the home screen 
and swiping to the left we have this google's discover page works flawlessly swiping up gets you to the app drawer you can disable this suggestions panel let me show you from the home screen settings as you can see there is the suggestion settings and from here if i just disable these suggestions or these toggles as you can see right now the suggestions are completely hidden so yes and this is how the quick settings panel looks like looks pretty different and pretty cool to my eyes at least as you are noticing it has the time over there on the top there is the estimated battery how long it will last and this is how the quick setting panel looks like and let me show you there is edit toggle option and from here you can edit and add multiple toggles like there is a screen capture and stuff i don't know let me add a couple of things over here like the fps kind of toggle and let me actually see i do not see the reboot toggle over here yet but yeah that's how it is the reboot toggle is right now missing i guess the reboot toggle is right now missing but there is this android 11 screen recorder as you can see and there is a device audio and microphone audio both recording at the same time so that's great with the default screen recorder and there is also this kind of screen recorder as you can see it just records right away i guess as you're noticing if i click on start now it will record one more screen recorder and i don't know what's this okay so this is again the same thing i guess so yes we get two kind of screen recorders and we get the fps info overlay Volte calling and stuff should be working fine you should not worry about that but let me show you the other things like the battery settings this is how it looks like we have the screen on time then we have how long the full charge will last so yeah this is just a prediction i guess and there is the battery percentage enabling option on the status bar then we have the turn on light when charging this is the notification light they are talking about i guess and we have the adaptive battery option and the battery saver and stuff but again there is no option to see the battery temperature and stuff over here or the charging cycle etc but yes 18 watt fast charging should be working fine here and if you tap here you can see the full battery usage the battery life should be really really great over here on this ROM you should not be worrying about the battery life here even the standby should be pretty great now let me show you the display settings this is how it looks like again we have the animations over there we have the dark theme and inside dark theme if you enable it let me show you there is no option to change the background over here so the dark theme is completely like dark it is not gray or something so that's what i like over here let me go back we have the night light then adaptive brightness and insert styles and wallpapers we have these kind of styles you can like customize it too let me show you you can have these accent colors over here plethora of accent colors are actually there but you have to create a theme for that i guess let me go back and inside wallpapers we have these living universe and stuff so live wallpapers you can download and like add then we have the choose a grid size and stuff like that and let me scroll down there is a double tap to wake too so yeah that works fine and inside lock screen we have these wake screen for notification and stuff but again there is no always unlock with the fingerprint scanner or something like that in the sound settings this is how it looks and by the way the volume panel looks like this and these kind of like the notification vibrator etc icons i like even on the status bar if you are noticing these kind of icons i am really really liking it over here and in the advanced settings we have some more things like the disabling screenshot sound option and stuff and by the way the three finger screenshot gesture over here is there as you can see it's working fine you can edit share or delete them from here but you can also disable the screenshot sound from the sound settings so that's great let me scroll down we have the face unlock over here so actually let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed first but then i will show you the face unlock so let me just lock the device with the power button because there is no double tap to sleep kind of lock so yeah that's a little bit weird but let me show you as you can see the fingerprint scanner speed is pretty fast let me show you one more time very reliable fingerprint scanner with my index finger of my right hand as you can see unlocking super fast no issues whatsoever with the fingerprint scanner let me show you up close as you can see the fingerprint scanner speed is fairly fairly fast no issues so setting up of the face unlock is done and again as you can see no double tap to sleep over here because the customizations has not been added yet so yeah let's press the power button to lock and there is the double tap to wake so let's see and as you can see it has unlocked successfully let me show you one more time and as you can see i have my five fingers over here so i'm not tapping the fingerprint scanner and i'm just double tapping over here and pointing towards my face and it unlocks so the face unlock speed is fairly fast no issues whatsoever with the face unlock
And by the way, this is how the recent panel looks like as you can see. And you can take a screenshot from this recent panel just like this and you can delete the screenshots of course and you have the select option or you can just tap and hold on the screen just like this and it will select the texts just like this on the recent panel itself. So this is how the recent panel works and as you can see you can tap on the like apps icon and you can go to the split screen mode and stuff of course or you can go all the way to the left and clear all the apps from memory from the recent. Currently let me show you the Google Assistant. Well is it working? Let's test that. Okay Google. As you can see, it is working flawlessly. Let me try one more time. Hey Google. As you can see again, Google Assistant with the keyword is working flawlessly. Also, you can swipe from these corners of course to get the Google Assistant. So it is working flawlessly with the Google Assistant with the voice keyword or just swiping. And here are the Android and Geekbench score for this particular ROM. Talking about banking apps, it passes the safety net test right out of the box. So that's the great feature in my opinion over here that if you are someone who uses a lot of banking apps, you won't be having any problems over here. Google Pay and stuff should be working right out of the box. Now let me talk about a bummer over here. With any kind of IR Blaster app or this LED RGB remote app, let me actually show you if I open it and right now it will work for once. Just notice it. So right now as you can see. So it did work for once and right now it is stuck. The whole UI is stuck and I have clean flash this ROM and in some ROMs it's happening. I don't know why, but it just crashes the whole device. And as you can see right now, it will force reboot. So again, if you're someone who uses the IR Bluster on their Redmi Note 7 Pro, I would say, yes, it's still not working kind of over here or it's just like force rebooting the device. So the only like bummers of this ROM, I would say in my personal opinion, is the problematic IR Blaster. There is no customizations as of right now much. I mean the double tap to sleep and stuff or things like that are missing and there is no advanced reboot over here. So in the power menu, let me show you even if I tap and hold on the restart, it just reboots to safe mode, not like there is no advanced reboot or stuff like that. And tapping on the restart of course makes the device reboot normally. So yeah, that's how it is. And other than that, I think it comes with the ANX camera and stuff and it has the Mi Audio Direct screenshot like three finger screenshot gesture and other things. So pretty much stock Android experience. For those things, I can definitely recommend you this ROM. But above things which I mentioned, you have to keep those in mind as of right now. So thank you so much for watching this video guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet. This is Tito from KD and Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one.